How's it going guys? Thank you guys for coming back to another video. It's your boy Joxel and today we are talking about how to deal with failure and rejection when applying for your first software engineering job. It's gonna happen, you're gonna get rejected, it's totally expected and normal, but how you deal with it may change how quickly you recover and get your first job. So to get started with that, I wanna talk about dealing with rejection. So personally for me, when I was first applying, I told myself that I was not going to stop applying. Well, really, I told myself I wasn't gonna stop applying until I got my first job, but for me, I think a general good rule of thumb is to not stop applying, or at least you know you hit a marker when you've received 70, yep, I said it, 70 rejection letters. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, just never hearing back from a company you applied for. I'm talking about 70 hard copied, emailed, either automated or from my actual hiring manager saying, hey, you were not selected for this position. Oh, for crying out loud, SpongeBob, you didn't get the job. What? Why do I think that's a good number? Simply because a lot of companies are just gonna ghost you to be real. But you need something to kind of keep you going, especially when you're getting ran with these rejections or non-responses back and forth for, for so long, if you're doing it for a month, two months, however long it takes you. Um, it can easily, you can easily lose sight of what your goal is and feel like you're not making any progress at all. So what I found is that if you give yourself a marker to hit, just to give yourself something that you're, even if you're failing, you're making progress towards, it makes it just that much more bearable. And it also helps you feel like you're not just losing all hope. So I definitely recommend setting some type of marker. My recommendation is 70 rejection letters, verified rejection letters, not including ghosting. So that way you guys have something to hit for when you're striving to get that first job. You're gonna get a number of interviews, but you wanna get those offer letters and you wanna make sure those offer letters are right for you. So the next thing I wanna touch on is finding an accountability partner or building some type of support system. If you got some good friends or some family you know you can lean on, I highly recommend building or finding an accountability partner. The purpose of this is to get somebody who's gonna keep tabs on you and make sure that you're not stopping your application process. It's easy to get really hyped up and start grinding and start filling out a bunch of different applications the first week, two weeks, but it gets a lot harder to keep that momentum up when you're a month, two months in the game. So having somebody who can reach out and check in on you, make sure you're like mentally you're okay and still there, and then somebody who's encouraging you to keep grinding until you achieve that goal, I think is makes a world of a difference in trying to do it alone. It's not absolutely necessary, but it definitely helps. I also recommend, like I said, building a support structure, whether you're leaning on your friends or your family to kind of keep you mentally there um, and to support you and to encourage you to let you know that, hey, even though you may not have been selected for whatever position you apply to, it's not a knock at your self-worth. It's not personal. That's the harder thing to realize, especially when it comes to dealing with imposter syndrome is recognizing that just because you weren't selected doesn't mean you're not a capable candidate, doesn't mean you're not a good developer doesn't mean you're not you know you're a bad person it just means that they as a business made a decision a business decision to choose somebody else over you and it doesn't necessarily reflect on your ability or inability as a developer or as, as an applicant you're taking this very person Tom, this is business, and this man is taking it very, very personal. <laughs> so uh, sometimes, you know, we can tell ourselves these things, but sometimes we forget to because we get caught up in the sadness or the loss of momentum or discouragement, and it really helps to have some type of support system. So if you got somebody you trust, you know, you got some family you can reach out to or a good friend or two, do that. And I, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to pay it back in dividends because having that really makes a difference. Another thing I highly recommend if you're dealing with rejection, be it your first, second, or 14th, um, try and figure out why you were rejected. Now, I don't recommend just you know straight up asking the recruiter um, or the person you interviewed with if you get the opportunity, hey, why didn't you choose me? Try and be a little bit more tactful uh, with trying to discover what it was that you were lacking as an applicant that caused the hiring manager to make the business decision to choose somebody else. So for example, I applied to a company called Red Ventures, which is a local marketing company here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, they're really big. They're your typical tech company, right? Everything from like the fast pace, working all the time. They got, they got really cool amenities in their in their office, and you know they got foosball tables and basketball courts and all kinds of crazy stuff. Rumored, I haven't actually been inside. When I interviewed with them, I ended up doing a front end code test. I filled out their you know application passed the coding test and ended up interviewing with their one of their technical interviewers who ended up being one of their senior devs. And 
he was asking me a couple of technical questions about, you know, JavaScript, React, and my experience with working with other marketing companies, you know, et cetera. Long story short, I didn't get accepted. So one of the things I did was I reached back out after I got my email saying, hey, you weren't, you know, you weren't accepted, this, that, and the other. I didn't go through a recruiter, by the way. I applied through one of their in-house hiring managers. So they have in-house recruiters that they use. So technically, I was replying back to the hiring manager. Um, in which, you know, I asked him for feedback on my, on my interview. I asked him, Hey, I understand I wasn't selected. I totally respect the process. If I, if you get the opportunity, could you ask the person who I interview with, uh, what it was that I was lacking in or what expectations I didn't meet that, you know, didn't present me with the opportunity. And they were nice enough to respond back and they gave me some, some, you know, bullet points and things that they were looking for. And really for that particular instance, what it came down to was they didn't feel like I had enough corporate experience, which is not a common response response you're going to get as somebody who's applying for their first job. If you're moving, if you're applying to companies who, you know, are either dealing with a number of clients that they're, you know, servicing or they move in a lot of fast paced environments. Sometimes they're going to want somebody who's kind of already in the flow or in the know of like how the typical development process works. And, um, for me, that was the case. He was like, you know, you did, you know, pretty good on the coding test. Your code was clean. I liked it. You know what you did during our technical interview, you know, it seemed like you had some good experience, but I just wasn't sure if you had enough corporate experience for this particular position. Maybe if another junior position comes up later, I'll be able to recommend it to you. Cause I also believe that the position I applied for was more mid-level. I'll get into that some other time, but that was some, that was some valuable information I got. I was like, okay, so now I learned that they were looking for a little bit more corporate experience. Um, further on in the email, he detailed like some of the questions I could have answered a little bit better or some of the topics that I could have, you know, gone into more detail in that would have inspired a little bit more confidence in, in their viewpoint as my, as me as an applicant. And that information was super valuable because I was then able to do the next step we're going to talk about, which is come up with an action plan to tackle some of those areas in which you as an applicant may or may not have been lacking in. So assuming that at this point that you have, you know, had a couple of interviews, you've gotten rejected, you've reached out and perhaps gotten some feedback, um, what do you do with that feedback? Well, I think it's really important to try and take the time to try and figure out if the feedback you got is addressable. Is it something that you it's in your power or locus of control that you can have an influence on? For example, I can't control that I don't have corporate experience. The most I can do in that case is try and do some more research regarding, you know, the typical corporate development process, maybe some more information around agile methodologies or things of that nature as a, as a talking point, but I can't generate corporate experience out of nowhere. So in that case, there's not much I could have done. But for example, in another case where I was rejected by another <laughs> marketing company as a web developer, they felt like I talked too much about being a designer because the, the actual position I was applying for was web developer, but I, taught, I was trying to lean into the fact that I had previous design experience, you know, as a UX, UI designer and a graphic designer, and I wanted to try and tout myself as like, oh, I'm a really valuable developer because not only am I on the technical side of things, but I also have the creative eye behind it and I can blend those abilities together. But for them, during that particular interview, they felt like I was more geared toward a designer role and I wasn't really f fitting for the developer role because of how much I leaned into that. So that was something I was like, okay, now going back, I can address that. I can lean back out of pushing so hard my design experience and focus on the position in which I'm applying for, which is talking about relevant development experience and ability, if that makes sense. So I find that it's really helpful, like I said, to ask for feedback and to try and figure out if that feedback is addressable. And if it is, come up with an action plan on how you want to address it. This will also serve as another milestone or marker to work towards so that way you feel like even in rejection, you're still making progress. And that's what's important. Thank you guys for watching this video. Um, I just wanted to give a little bit of insight on what it feels like to get rejected and how to effectively handle that so that way you don't lose momentum. Um, the next video, I'll be talking about the final part of this series, which is the success, how to handle getting that offer letter, what to do if you want to negotiate your salary, um, and things of that nature. So thank you so much for watching. If you're ready to watch the next video, the card will be up in the little eye box that pops up. Um, otherwise, if you have any feedback for me, leave it in the comments. I'm definitely going to read it. I'll like reply if I can. Um, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.